Hello, welcome to the online course, what is open data journalism and why we need skills to search for data. It is the fifth topic of the course, and we will now analyze what kind of skills and why do data journalists need. The outline of the presentation is as follows. First, we will answer the question of why you need skills to be a data journalist. Then, we will have a look at the technical and soft skills that data journalists need and what steps one should take to become a data journalist. We will pay attention to programming skills that are essential while working with data. As Meredith Broussard, a data journalism professor from New York University said, to become a good data journalist, it helps to begin by becoming a good journalist. The idea was accompanied by Eliel Jaspin, a famous American journalist, that computers don't make a bad reporter into a good reporter. What they do is make a good reporter better. The both ideas emphasize the importance of journalism skills above all else. You have to know how to tell a story, no matter it is a regular news story or a data journalism story. Computers and data programs can improve your performance as a data journalist, but the basis for it is journalistic skills. Yet, journalistic skills alone is not enough to be a good data journalist. You also need a set of skills that combine graphic design, IT, and even mathematical skills. There is a popular belief that being a data journalist means being a multitasker with a superpower. And that is actually true. Being a data journalist requires more skills than being a regular journalist. Yet, the basis for it is journalism skills. While being a data journalist, you investigate, report, and edit like no one else. The approach to stories is not only data-driven, but it is also story-driven. Like professional investigative journalists, Open data journalists spend days and nights sifting through folders and documents to find a good lead for the data story. Whether it is a news report, a big feature, or an opinion piece, the stories are deep and well-crafted for any possible platform and audience. Therefore, you need to know how to write stories, narratives, undertake media monitoring, and so on. Then, you also need graphic design skills. The duties of the data journalist include data visualization, prototyping, and sketching. One of the most common data journalism visualizations is data maps. So you should know how to make this kind of visuals. Having video making skills is also very important because one of the best data journalism stories are made of animated videos while presenting data. Furthermore, knowledge in IT and coding skills are also a must. For most of the data journalists, Python is like a native language. We will talk about this program later in the presentation. The responsibilities of the open data journalist include gathering data, coding, sometimes even creating web applications, and they are not limited to only that. Finally, the last but not least, math skills are also very important. While you don't need maths degree to be a data journalist, you should have working knowledge of some maths functions, understanding numbers and being able to clearly convey their meaning to readers is a crucial part of being an open data journalist. Data journalists should have a working knowledge of arithmetics, be comfortable with statistics and be able to calculate percentages, ratios and other relationships between numbers. Also, Having a basic understanding of probability and margin of error are all necessary for a data journalist. Besides technical skills, some soft skills are also very important. Usually, a data journalist has to manage an army of journalists, graphic designers, and developers, which all work on the same data journalism project. Working in a team is more common for a data journalist rather than working alone. Therefore, being highly analytical helps to analyze the complex data. A data journalist must have intellectual curiosity to find answers to complex questions. Data journalism is all about discovering underlying truths. 
Since making a data journalism story is time demanding, good time management skills is important to manage time efficiently and to prioritize tasks. Otherwise, data storytelling can take loads of time. Problem solving is also important. It helps to identify tricky issues that are sometimes hidden, provide methods to find the best answers. As a data journalist, you should be able to frame questions appropriately and to understand how the results relate to the issues that you want to write about. Finally, data journalists must clearly and fluently explain complex findings to the audience or even the editors of the newsrooms that are usually non-technical people. And for this, effective communication skills are needed. While there are many skills that data journalists have to master, you can start by practicing some simple steps. Read loads to expand your knowledge base. Practice writing and describing statistics. Once you have done that, get familiar with some programming languages and coding. This often takes more time. Enhance your skills in spreadsheets, such as Microsoft Excel. It is one of the best techniques for data journalism beginners. Find tools that you find comfortable and confident working with. And finally, build your network with data scientists and other journalists. You can learn a lot from your peers. Programming is probably the most complex part of a data journalism. One of the main programs for programming is Python. Its massive libraries are used for data manipulation and are very easy to learn, even for a beginner data journalist. We will now watch a video tutorial on the program. Why should you learn Python? Python offers a stepping stone into the world of programming. Even though Python programming language has been around for 25 years, it is still rising in popularity. Contemporary startups and big corporations such as Dropbox, Google, and Instagram are using this language to build their sites. One reason for its popularity lies in the simplicity of the code, which makes for easy comprehension for beginners. Python code is easy to read, easy to learn, and still a very powerful language. It takes absolutely no skill to learn Python. Whether you are a beginner or a high-end professional developer, you can learn to code Python. Python is an open source language with a huge following of volunteers that are constantly trying to improve it. This allows for the language to remain fresh and current with the newest trends. Python has libraries for just about everything. Use it to quickly build a lower performance, often less powerful prototype. Python is also great for validating ideas or products for established companies and startups alike. So, Python can be used in so many different projects. What can you do with Python? Python can be used for multiple things. Python can easily be used for small, large, online and offline projects. The best options for utilizing Python are web development, simple scripting and data analysis. Here are a few examples of what Python will let you do. Web development. You can use Python to create web applications on many levels of complexity. There are many excellent Python web frameworks, including Pyramid, Django, and Flask, to name a few. Data analysis. Python is the leading language of choice for many data scientists. Python has grown in popularity within this field due to its excellent libraries, including NumPy and Pandas, and its superb libraries for data visualization like Matplotlib and Seaborn. Machine learning. What if you could predict customer satisfaction or analyze what factors will affect household pricing? Or to predict stocks over the next few days based on previous year's data? There are many wonderful libraries implementing machine learning algorithms such as Scikit-Learn, NLTK, and TensorFlow. Computer vision. You can do many interesting things such as face detection, color detection, while using OpenCV and Python. Raspberry Pi is a very tiny and affordable computer which was developed for education and has gained enormous popularity among hobbyists with do-it-yourself hardware and automation. You can even build a robot and automate your home. Raspberry Pi can be used as the brain for your robot in order to perform various actions and or react to the environment. The coding on a Raspberry Pi can be performed using Python. The possibilities are endless. Game development. Create a video game using module Pi game. Basically, you use Python to write the logic of the game. Pygame applications can run on Android devices. 
Web scraping. If you need to grab data from a website, but the site does not have an API to expose data, you can use Python to scraping data. Writing scripts. If you're doing something manually and want to automate repetitive stuff, such as emails, it's not difficult to automate once you know the basics of this language. Browser automation. Perform some neat things, such as opening a browser and posting a Facebook status. You can do it with Selenium with Python. GUI development. Build a GUI application, desktop app using Python modules tkinter, by Qt to support it. Just a desire and willingness to learn it. There are many materials and courses available to teach you how to code Python without any given skills. Simply taking a Python course online is probably all you will need to learn this language. Another very common program is R. It is a programming language and free software environment for statistical computing and graphics. We will now watch a video tutorial on this coding program. So why is it that R is becoming such a popular and useful tool in data analysis and statistical analysis? I'm gonna tell you why, stay tuned. Now the short answer is, this is one of the rare occasions when something that is free and open source is in fact better, and that this is in my opinion, better, than the expensive commercially available alternatives that are out there. And if you don't believe me, just look at the trends. There are masses of people moving from SPSS to R, from Stata to R, from SAS to R. I don't see anybody moving the other direction. Now R is essentially a programming language and you might find that fact a little bit intimidating or scary, but don't. And you'll see when I do the little demonstration at the end of the video that it's not difficult to use, that it's relatively intuitive and you can learn it. And there's loads and loads of support out there if you need it. The importance of using code to, when you do data analysis is that your, your, your analysis is reproducible. Somebody else can see exactly how it is that you got to the answers that you got to. Added to that, you've got the ability to collaborate with other people and they can look at what you've done and make suggestions or changes or identify mistakes in your analysis. And you can't do that with a point and click system. And the next reason why using code to do your analysis is important is that not only is your analysis reproducible, but it's also repeatable. In other words, if a year from now you've got additional data, let's say you had data for 2018 and in 2019 you've got double the data set, you want to rerun that analysis, you just run your, your, your code and everything, your, your data cleaning, your data manipulation and your analysis all gets repeated right there and then at the push of a button. Now, one of the most exciting things about R is because it's open source, you've got people all over the world writing packages and packages are things that you can install and use that deal with very specific data analytic problems. And these are free and there are literally thousands of them. Another big advantage of using R is that it has incredible data visualization and graphics capabilities. In fact, in that sense, it beats any other package hands down. It's a slam dunk. Nothing comes close. Right, now I'm going to do a short demonstration just to show you that using a programming language to do analysis is not difficult, it's not scary, it's relatively simple. Okay, so watch this. Okay, so in this particular example, I have got a little data frame called friends. I click on that and we can see it over here. We've got some variables and some observations. I'm looking at age and height. Let's see what we can do with those. Basically, the way the coding works is you apply a function to an object. So... In this case, the function might be the mean. We want to know the mean of age, which is the object, which is 23. We might want to know the median of the height. We can plot a histogram of the age or plot age against height. And we might want to know if there is a statistically significant correlation between age and height. And as we can see in this particular case, there isn't. Right, so clearly writing code is not that scary at all. I mean, I haven't broken out into a sweat. You'll notice I don't have a tremor. I don't have a heart palpitation. I haven't fallen over dead. I've actually survived. It's not difficult. It's not scary. You can do it. As you probably now understand, being a data journalist is more complicated than being a regular journalist. It combines skills to search for reliable data, manage it, visualize it, and above all, tell a nice story. Yet, it is a very dynamic field of work where you can combine your passion for creativity, maths, 
and even IT. Thank you for your attention.